So in the previous section, we discussed how Angular can integrate with Firebase, and we have implemented a real-time application, our events application. We have created a home page to display data from uh, our events, and we have a section to manage the events as well as adding the events. There's something that we miss and is mandatory in pretty much every web application and is actually to secure our application and allow only logged in user to do certain actions. And what we want to achieve is also that if a user is not logged in, it won't be able to see any event, for example. In this world section, we'll discuss a great feature that Firebase offers and is actually a way to deal with authentication and authorization in Angular without too much effort. So the first thing we have to do is to decide which type of authentication we want to use. If we go in our Firebase application dashboard, you'll notice that on the left panel, there's a button called Login and Authentication. If we click that button, you'll see that there are different types of authentication that we can use and also that we can define authorized domains. So we won't be discussing Specific authorized domains is very easy anyway. You need to enter the list of domains you want to authorize, but we'll focus in the type of authentication. And specifically uh, for this section, we'll do email and password authentication, which is the standard one. So we will click this flag and it will open a form where we can enter different details. So when somebody, for example, asks for a reset password, we can define the email that gets sent from, from who from which name and who they should send a reply to. But the most important thing is that on the bottom, we can add manually register users. So if we want to manually register someone, we can do that through this interface, but we won't be doing that. We want the user to sign up in our application and that's exactly the scope of this fourth lecture. In the initial zip file attached to this lesson, you'll find a new folder in our main Angular project folder, which is named login. And the only file I've added to this folder is a file named login HTML. And this is just a bootstrap template. And I'll show you in a minute how this template looks like. It's very rough uh, and we didn't add any Angular logic to it yet. So feel free to take it as a start and we're going to modify it a, a little bit together. So let's take a look at how this file looks like, and if we want to do that, we need to create a new root. So the first thing you have to do is open your application.js, app.js, and we will be adding a new root. So we can copy this one, add a comma, and call it login slash login HTML. This is something you have already seen multiple times across the course. We want this to be our first page though. So we will be removing the home HTML root that we were showing at the minute. So we can remove it, add a comma here, and that's it. So when a user access the application, the first page you will see is the login root. The way we have divided this section is we'll first create a sign up page where user can register. In the next lesson, we will create the login, the authentication, and then we'll think about authorization and redirecting user to specific pages where after the login. So let's start with the sign up page. After I created this route, you might want to go in your mock if you still have it and add a new pass through route to your app.run.mock.js. The reason why we do that is because if we don't, the mock backend will uh, return an error because that route is not authorized and is not specified inside the mock itself. So we add login, pass through. And you might start thinking about removing this backend mock. And it's very nice. You, as you can see, we are actually adding new routes and adding a pass through Rhine every time we have implemented the actual behavior. When we finish with all the behaviors, we can remove all the files, including the ng-mock dependency, but we'll do that later on at the end of our application. We can then save our file and take a look at how the application looks like now. 
this is the main page that we will get when accessing the website. And the cool thing about this is that if we click on sign up, we will have automatically a sign up form and we can go back to the sign in and this is what we will use to log in the user. The template is actually using a jQuery command to do that and for the scope of this lecture, that's enough. Now we want to define a controller for this specific page and we want to define the model for both username and password, all right? So we'll go back to the application itself and we will create the controller for our login route. So we'll add a comma and as you are already aware, we can do a controller and call it login CTRL, login controller and add an alias with the controller as a syntax that will be even a login CTL, all right? That's sufficient. We now can define our controller root. So I'll add a new file under the login folder. I'll save it and name it login.controller.js. And we can now define the controller syntax. So we want to declare again our module, angular.module, event app, dot controller. Our name is login. CTRL. We want to inject again the Firebase URL as a dependency. And remember always that when you open the initial zip file, you need to enter your own Firebase URL. I'm using mine at the minute. So this is our annotation and we will inject the parameter in the function. var self equals this, as you have already learned. So we can reference also in nested function our controller and then we'll declare a new reference which will be a new firebase and we'll pass as a parameter the url so far so good yeah so now we want a function to sign up and that's where the fun comes so we declare self dot sign up equals function we don't need parameters and Firebase is a very nice function you can use to create a user and guess what the name is, is uh, create user. So it will be ref dot create user. And this function takes as parameters, it takes the email of the user. So it will be our email. And we will define what this is. And then it takes the password. This function returns a promise. So we can take the promise. The first parameter will be an error and then it returns user data. Inside the function, we can check the error, first of all. And if we have an error, we want to log it in the console. So at the minute, we just do error creating a user and comma, and we will concatenate the error. Otherwise, in our else condition, we will console.log successfully I missed the necessary, successfully created user account with UID. So why UID? Because when you create a user in Firebase, it will return a unique identifier for that specific user. And we'll take a look at how that identifier looks like. And that identifier is containing the user data element. So we want to log it, user data.uid. That's what we get back. We might be interested also in seeing what else is inside our user data. So let's log also the world user data element, all right? And that's it. So we will move all of this code inside the service actually, but I let you guys doing that. In the final zip, I'll attach the refactor version, but please create a service and call the service from the login controller. You know how to do that, and I'm sure that you'll be able to do that on your own. And the last thing we want to do is to define where we want to store the email and the password. So let's just do self.email for the email and self.password for the password itself, all right? We can now go back to the login HTML template and define the two models that, where we, that we want to use. So if we open that, we will have the email and password area. So here we have an input field We'll add our ng model that will be login ctl dot email. And for the password field, we will have login login ctl dot password. 
I'm not adding any validation again. This is just a form that we want to use to prove that we can register user through Firebase and Angular. If you want to add the ng messages and use everything you learned so far, do that. You still find the updated version inside the final zip file. The very last thing we have to do in this file is actually to tie in our sign up function. So let's scroll down a little bit. And as you can see, we have this button, the sign up button. We can add a simple ng click directive. So ng click that we call our sign login CTL dot sign up. No parameters because we are already inside the controller. We can access the scope and therefore our model. So again, let's look at our password and as you can see we have everything set up. So I'll save the file and we can now go in our index.html and add the new controller reference that we have just created, the new login.controller file. So I'll just copy this one. This will be the new one will be login slash login controller.js okay. Let's just take a quick look at what we did. We have our controller dependency in our index.html. We have created our function to register the user. Uh, actually, there's an extra parenthesis here, sorry, an extra brackets, remove it, because this is a parm. And we will close the brackets just here at the end of the else condition, so here. And that should be it. So. Sorry guys, you know, sometimes checking your code will really help, you see? So we can now go back to our application and see what happens. We can refresh it. And click on sign up here. And I'll create a new account with my own email, so alex at webbermind.com, and the password will be capital U D E M Y one two three. So Udemy one two three. Let's click on sign up. And as you can see, we have successfully created a user account with a unique ID. And in the second line of our console, we can see that the only object that we get back as a user data contains our UID parameter that we can see up here. What happened in the Firebase side? Let's click again on the Firebase tab. And if I click on refresh list and the register users, you can see that it will show my new created user and his own user ID. I won't see any password related data because it enforces security, but I'm able to send him a reset password email. So if I will click this button, the user will receive an email that follows the template that we have defined above, and he will be able to reset his own password. Well, actually we'll get a token that will allow him to reset the password. You learn how to reset the password in one of the upcoming uh, lectures. But at the minute, we have been able to create a new users. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the Firebase of service because the implementation we're done right now was using the native Firebase API. But we want to use what Angular Fire offers, and it will be a very quick change. So let's see how to do that.